So hi again, good morning everybody and welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, I have been having a little bit uh, kind of challenging with the connection here so I uh, network supposed to be strong enough from, from my house here but it seems like a uh, not so I have uh, well anyway so hopefully this will work out fine. <laughs> um, so if, if there is a problem in between this connection, apologize, my apology. So how is everybody doing? How is your practice is working? Are you still committed, practicing every night? So, uh, and uh, I, I must say that I have been practicing every night and um, Practice has been going really well. I'm very happy about it. And uh, also, for me, it's very important that I, this feeling of that we are whole cyber Sangha, we are all practicing together, we are all connected to with each other, we are all supporting each other. And then every now and then I see, I'm trying to look the comments that people are practicing, uh, what what's happening, and, and that also it's wonderful. So I think I would um, really like uh, not only during uh, Facebook Live but afterward as you watch this teaching, as you watch this uh, singing of mantras, I want all of you, you know, as you're practicing, I want you to just, you know, get up in the morning, maybe if you feel like uh, giving a little feedback and uh, whatever happened that night, uh, that you know that I am looking through those notes. So, and um, if there is anything in future to redirect some of things that I will teach, emphasize or answer questions, I will these these comments is are I'm, I'm going to base on that. So so continue uh, making comments and uh, yeah. So so this time this particular talk it's about meditation on clear light while asleep. So. Meditation on clear light while asleep. So first of all, I wanted to say a little bit about what this clear light is. And I'm sure that all of you who receiving Dzogchen teachings, um, you hear that many times. Even you are receiving like um, uh, some higher tantra, tantric teachings, you hear also this term a lot. So, so basically, what is this clear light? And I don't want you to go so much uh, uh, detail, uh, complicated way, I'm very intellectual, conceptual. No, I just wanted to keep it very simple, as simple as possible. So, first of all, the word clear light, just think about these two kind of words. They are clear and light. And um, so they are understanding about this sometimes basically these two words clear understanding is uh, emptiness and clarity or spaciousness and awareness uh, sky and sun so metaphor it will be sky clear sky and the sun shining um, in sutri more like a definition talk about emptiness and clear light has the clarity and uh, so, so this is very important. So in our own experiences, those who have been uh, following me for a long time and, and uh, on my work and also particularly my books like Awakening Luminous Mind, and I talk about the three door and three inner refuge. So when we talk about inner refuge, we talk about the three refuges. We talk about the first space and then we talk about the second awareness, third, warmth. So this space, sacred space, awareness and warmth, and they has directly linked with this description of sleep yoga practice. Because this is important. In the teaching, you hear so many things from so many different people in so many different ways, but if you cannot make the connection between all these things together, then it will be very difficult for understand and and particularly to narrow down to make it practice because it will be too complicated to think 
and too, too much to practice. But if you're able to connect these dots, then the practice becomes simple, becomes just clear light. So, so the first and second refuge is what is clear and light. So, so clear word, you can see clear, or you can think about clarity, you can think about clearing, you can think about clear, like luminosity, clearness, or some, some, something like that. So clearing will be many times when we do all kinds of practices of purification, we are clearing something, we are clearing blockages, we are clearing our karma, we are clearing um, the conflict, we are clearing obscuration, we are clearing doubts, we are clearing anger to connect with love, and all this is a process word which is, has a process, clearing. But something clearness is, or clarity is something that our own inner essence, who we are. So clear has something to do with the space. It's not a process, but the state. So a clear state, clear being. So clear refer to sacred space. Another word, clear refer to sacred space. Light refer to the awareness of that sacred space. So for example, if I am not clear this moment and I'm thinking I am getting a little bit worried about certain things and I'm thinking I'm, my mind is going a little dull and then I'm like not very clear and suddenly I realize, oh, I'm identifying too much with the situation or too much with that person too much with this negative feeling, but that's not me. I am different, I am separate, I am not my pain. Suddenly I recognize who I am is this clear space. So suddenly I, I recognize that clarity or that s sacred space moment I don't identify, moment I realize I was identifying, I recognize myself, I recognize that space. So that's what it's talking. Clear light is referring to space and awareness and simple, okay? So, so that's the uh, uh, first, I think it's important to define that, what is clear light. I know, I hope that now it's clear, but if not, we will come back to it. Second thing I want to talk a little bit about, of course, you know, uh, people, one time I met uh, a geishe who much, much older, and he, 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 he was talking to me and he said, oh, I heard that you teach dream yoga teaching and practices, and sometimes um, people, what do you, by the way, what do you do? What are you teaching? So, um, is it people will understand? Do you think that people will understand? Do you think people are ready for it? Do you think it's not too complicated, the practice of clear light? Of course I, you know, he told me that and I was, in, in a way, I felt like a saying, um, they will not understand, they will, it's not worth teaching, it's, they are not ready, they are not prepared, they are not uh, candidate for these teachings. Kind of sense of, did not say directly, but that's what I sense. So, that, that Gishinla has definitely a, a point. The point is that it is not easy to understand. And uh, it is for some people, it's very difficult to understand. So, so I'm not saying it's very easy to understand, but on the other hand, I'm not saying, I think it's very unfair to say that people are not ready, people are not prepared, people they are not good enough to receive this teaching. It's a very unfair statement, unfair action, decision not to do that. So, because you never know who is ready and who is not ready. Sometimes you think some people are supposed to be ready, they are not ready. And then other time you think these people, how these people can be ready? But they are ready. And readiness has nothing to do with how much intellectual understanding you have, how much you read, how much you have learned, how much time you have spent, in, spent reflecting. It's not, not much to do with all those things. It's a more like a state of being, how much you are connected to who you are, how much you have been genuine, how much you have been like a, 
con uh, connection, how much you have not been driven away by your circumstances around you in your life, around around your life with the situation. You are not driven by all the time what you do, how you think, how you see by others, but you you are some have more connection to yourself. There are a lot of people out there have those innate uh, rich quality regardless of their uh, uh, learning from traditions or something like that. So, so I, what I'm saying, yes, it's difficult, but also you give a shot, you give a chance to it. So that's what I'm trying to say. And I know like sometime that I've been a couple of times last year taught, taught these teachings few places uh, in a set of weekend, three days kind of set, two and a half days, three days set. And uh, there were some people I met that who who were saying, I have ne I never knew there's a practices like that. I've never done practices like that. And I I don't think I will be able to do or something like that. They were a little bit like a, like a, not hoping that something's going to happen and even having some s skeptical mind, you know, like doubting about it. But in, in uh, two days, and some of those people did have profound experience and have lucid dream, first time lucid dream in their life and profound experiences of uh, clear light. I think, I feel like they have some uh, experiences of clear light. So, so, it's, so I'm, what I'm saying is it's, it's possible that one can have also. Now, so now we know what the clear light is and what now we know how these experiences can happen in our everyday life. So let's talk a little bit about in everyday experiences in our life. We gave two specific exercises uh, before, so I will briefly mention them. One exercise was simply um, dissolving every object of ego, pain, conflict into light and these light dissolve in your body and and then everything in your body like every organ, every s senses, every cells, every memory, every pain, every sickness, everything in your body transforms into the light. So and then these light uh, kind of go together and become one sphere of light in f your forehead. It's three simple process. Dissolving every object of ego, outer world, into light, and the light comes in your body. Dissolving every pain, sickness, blockages, your organs, cells into the light, become one single sphere of light in your forehead, and you focus there for a while, and sudden, then gradually you let go of that sphere of light, you dissolve into this vast expanse space, which is clear. As well as when we say clear light, that experience is clear. Then, when it's ex dissolving into the space, contact with the space, connection with the space, awareness, so connection with the space, that space is clear. The moment you are aware of that expansiveness of the sacred space, that awareness is the light. That awareness is the, we can say yishe, we can say rikpa, uh, we can say wisdom. So that is the wisdom. So uh, so there's a two things happening, right? One, uh, the sphere of light which ex dissolves and expands into the space. What is there? There's a space there, sacred space, that is clear but not necessarily you are aware of that. So, for example, some people, the moment that sphere of light dissolves into the space, the moment of your only reference point dissolves into the space, the moment your only sense of self dissolves into the space, can be fearful, can be sense of loss, can be there's nothing to observe or nothing to perceive, observe, recognize, know and connect. That happens frequently. So if that happens, that basically what it means is you are lost. You have clear, but you are not. You don't have the light. You have managed to open, but you are not managed to be aware. But that once 
journey, one single problem happens to so many people all the time. They, they find themselves there, but they are not conscious. This process of clearing is not necessarily always through the practices, beautiful fancy practices like Maju Sanjay Jusum teaches. Now, sometimes this experience of clear, clearing happens in the body when, when we, through exhaustions, for example, when you need to go to the bathroom uh, very badly, when you release tensions, or you need to, to cry, you holding the sadness for a very long time, finally you, you feel very open and you, your, your tears comes out. You feel this sense of deep opening and clearing, beautiful experience, but not necessarily you are aware of that. You are, you connect with that. You release, but you don't connect. So, so that's important in our everyday life experiences, these to come these two things together, clear and light. Um, we say a union of, uh, we say, saltong uh, nime, uh, the inseparable state of clarity and emptiness. Or we say, detong yirme, inseparable state of the bliss and emptiness. We say, nangtong yirme, inseparable state of vision, appearances, and emptiness. So these inseparable state of clear and light in a different tenet systems are equally important, but anyway, particularly, you don't have to remember everything, particularly here we are talking about clear and light, okay? So let me give some examples of that. Okay, sorry, I missed. So there was two exercises. So one exercise, exercise was dissolving into the light, remember? Now, the, what is the second exercise? The second exercise was that uh, f f bringing attention inward yourself and uh, through three doors, through the stillness of the body, silence of the speech, spaciousness of the mind, and finding that sacred space, awareness, and warmth, inner refuge in you. So you are, in the, before you go to sleep, you you enter that, you are in that space, you are aware and connected, and you feel the warmth of being, or the uh, yeah, warmth of being, you are there. So from that place, from that deep source, you as you breathe it out, like, You're breathing out like a hung, luminous hung, luminous light from your nostril. The image of hung was there earlier in the, my Facebook page, those of you wondering well, how does it look. And so you breathe it out like a hung. So each, these are not like a solid, not like a carved in a stone and rock on the paper, written on the paper. They are lights. So hung are like a very light kind of thing and it going out from the nostril, and like a bubble, you're taking a bath, your bubble comes out, and bubble pouring, whole bathroom is bubble. Like so, whole your room, your in a house, your uh, neighborhood, your city, your, you know, like tr transforming into the light. So basically everything outside is transformed into the light through your breath. And why through your breath? Because breath is energy, and breath is particular energy of awareness. The breath is in that way light. Light is breath, and the both are connected to your awareness, your sense of presence. So when you are connected, when you are aware, you send out this light out in the environment. So everybody who is around you are affected. Maybe your cat start to jump, the dog start to move the tail, your husband and wife start to smile, or your flowers start to kind of glow. It, you're affecting around you. Basically, you're, you're breathing out light. Think about when you're depressed, you're anger, you see the world in a negative way. When you breathe those moments, you are breathing out those energy. And you can see some days when you, when you are in that state, you can see 
like you are people are like uh, looking at you uh, like something wrong with you right you go you go in a gas station and they are looking at you like something wrong with you and then suddenly you go to the next coffee place and then maybe the the gas station people have already called the coffee place he's coming there just be careful and then when you arrive in a coffee place it looks like they already know that you will be coming and they are looking not very good at you because it's not really the people from the gas station or it's not people from the the coffee place it's how you radiating your energy out to them they are simply being a mirror and you're basically seeing yourself and you are able to conscious in that moment if you're able to shift your energy if you're able to change from that dark place to more luminous place instantly you will see the response from those people too so this is the practice where you you're breathing out lights and everything around you are transforming into the light and when then when you're breathing in you are also breathing in light and then everything inside transforming into the light in the end of the day there is nothing than the light in outside everything is light you you begin to see uh, your chair it's like a beautiful like a, you it will, as if you're looking through very uh, uh how you say high sophisticated lens you can see the detail the depth the color definitions and uh you can see that in objects because that's because the, somehow you are being in that state or in contrary when you're looking inside yourself your level of experience of your own body your awareness of your own emotion your connection to your qualities are so vivid so clear so real and so these experiences happens right so so anyway so these are the two exercises uh, we taught i i would not change more practices i will go deeper into these two practices so i hope that uh, just please tell me as i'm looking at your comments here tell me how many people how many of you are practicing these two exercises yes no and uh, and those you have been practicing very diligently and does these specifically with these two exercises do you feel any effect do you feel some sense of um, feeling uh, your your uh, your environment more uh, lighter your body more lighter your feelings and emotions are more lighter your uh, your experiences of feeling more lighter and more restful uh, just please uh, kind of share with me those you are doing these exercise on every night and that's what i'm recommending uh, please uh, make comment here and also uh, we last time we mentioned there are also some other things what we call support practices for the sleep yoga practice and some of them you might able to relate and some of them you are not able to relate so if you are not able to relate to the practice then don't engage too much thought on it and don't argue with me or anybody any any teacher or any text any tradition saying i don't believe these are not right no if you don't understand just don't engage if you feel your connection one time a friend of mine said everything what i don't understand i take it that's not for me now everything i do understand i i take that as it's a gift that life is giving me now a gift of knowledge that life is providing me now and why i wanted to engage which which is not my gift and i wanted to only engage with a gift it's really specifically for me and i thought that was a very beautiful uh, way of looking so i i always tell people that's kind of way to look at it so 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 for example some some example will be a uh, connection to the teachers like a uh, lama we say lama yidam dakini the master the deity goddesses so and some people they don't understand when i say goddesses who are these people angels okay maybe i understand a little bit some other people go crazy about goddesses <laughs> so so if you are if you are the one who really love goddesses go crazy about goddesses and you definitely feel more more relation connection to the goddesses than anybody around you then 
you definitely want to, to bring those connections alive the moment you go to sleep because they are truly with you that moment like your mother, like your security guard, your protector, your guardian angel. They are clearly there, so you, you wanted to connect beside these practices. Or somebody who feel deep sense of connection to the teacher, uh, your, your, your spiritual guide, uh, you know, obviously you wanted to connect to that. So, you know, whenever, uh, and some people love to pray, and uh, before go to sleep, praying is a wonderful thing to do because it's basically, uh, you, uh, why it's wonderful? I think because there is some sense of trusting beyond your ego. Why I think prayer is important, why I think prayer pray will work. Because somehow when you pray, it's something that you're saying, I'm not uh, right now capable of achieving, knowing and doing. So I, I trust higher beings, I trust that something exists more than my pain, more than my ego, and I am invoking those beings, those energies, those blessings to come and help me. So there is a sense of uh, going beyond your ego, there is a sense of uh, trusting someone who is beyond your ego, and, uh, th and then yeah, they, they, that's the reason why I think the prayers has a definitely power and I would recommend to prayer too. So one, one thing I wanted to say here, you know, as probably most, most Americans are familiar with the, this, this example, the song, You're My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine, right? So everybody, yes, everybody, uh, is everybody know you're not American only I think everybody probably knows all around the world and uh, so I looked it up this morning uh, Jimmy Davis uh, s uh, seems like a claim uh, maybe there's some discussion about who is actually who wrote this but anyway this song that everybody is familiar so think about that song so you are my sunshine my only sunshine so so of course, probably in this this is a romantic song. So you're probably referring to your lover or your partner or your husband, wife, or your uh, I don't know maybe or even your friend. Uh, so, but in this case, think about you're not referring. Think about that song. Maybe you can. I would recommend to sing the song um, in your car. Close the window on the highway when you are bothered by the traffic. Close the window and turn on the music, sing out loud as possible, exercise your chest, your throat, uh, your voice, and sing that and feel that, right? So when you do that, what do you want to think? You are my sunshine. Uh, your sunshine is now referring to sky and the sun, right? Uh, clear and the light. If there is no clear sky, there is no sunshine. So in if there is no... Uh, sacred space in you, there is no luminous light in you. So when you say you are, uh, you are my sunshine, you are referring to your inner refuge, your inner uh, protector, your inner temple, your inner enlightened wisdom qualities, you are referring to that. You are my sunshine. And it's an absolutely only true my only sunshine. In this case, if you're referring to the inner refuge, it's absolutely that's true, my only sunshine. And if you're referring to somebody, I don't know if that's true. Uh, but it's anyway, that's not the point here. <laughs> so we will not, because you people change, people say, oh, this is one, this, that is my sunshine, and two years later you decided, no, that's not my sunshine. And then my sunshine is somebody else, right? So your whole lifetime you're looking for your sunshine, and uh, through through journeying so much through the clouds or rains and darkness and winds and looking for sunshine and never finding one, uh, but this in this case when you sing, you, it's referring to your inner sacred space and your inner light and particularly the inseparable state of that clarity and emptiness 
or clarity, the space and awareness, inseparable state. You are referring referring to that. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Okay. So you are what you are trying to do. You are basically trying to connect. Imagine this this song is sang by your ego, and is uh, your ego finally fall in love with your true self. Just think about that. This is a song the ego is singing and singing toward your true being. And your ego is saying, you are my sunshine, you are my, my only sunshine, right? And it's true. So ego finally realizes there is sunshine in you. And recognizes, acknowledges, connects, enjoys, transcends, dissolves, and becomes one with that sunshine, becomes one with that light. So ego sings and becomes one that inner refuge. Beautiful. Don't you think? Yeah, I definitely think that's a beautiful. So I want all of you think about this song, uh, but think about this song in a specific way that you are, ego is singing toward your true self, and you are, the weaker aspect of yourself is discover your inner strength and confidence is singing toward that strength, singing toward that peace, singing toward that joy, singing toward that power, inner power, singing toward that inner light. So I'll think that way. Okay, so I think um, um, now last uh, uh, couple of times, I one time I was down in uh, um, uh, Singes, we had a recently Singes uh, spring break. We were on holiday for a few days on on ocean. So I shared a little bit ocean view, uh, with the sound of the ocean, the view of the ocean, the sky, the sun, and another video I share from uh, from Berkeley uh, Marina here, uh, the view of the San Francisco when the the early morning sunrise hitting the San Francisco with the bay and and the light there with the, you can see the sky and light too much more a little bit more quieter and uh, when I was singing Aum Hung or you can sing Om Ah Hung it does not matter and so basically it's like uh, connecting to your body speech and mind connecting to you yourself through that through those mantras by looking at those beautiful view feeling the feeling it. And that's that's the reason why I did I did that people can connect that. So the videos videos as of course you can find so many beautiful videos like that. But if you wanted to listen to the one I have, it's on my Facebook with I, I'm singing background. I'm singing singing the mantra, so you can listen to that. And particularly if you if you have uh, exposure, when can, go out and go out and see more sky. Go out, look it up in the sky, see more light. So I would recommend also that go out, look at the sky, connect with the sky, that, that's the outer sacred space. Uh, look at the light in the sky, the sunset, sunrise, uh, reflecting light onto the mountain, lake, the buildings and flowers. Look at those light and that is outer manifestation outer light but when you connect with this those outer sky you it helps you to connect with the inner sky when you connect with those outer lights it will help to you connect with the inner light when you feel more connection to the inner space and inner light you have a far more greater chance to connect with the clear light within for your sleep yoga practice so Thank you very much, and uh, I hope that uh, this practice is working. So uh, all of you want continue to practice. So dedicate, don't forget, remind each other, support each other, give me the feedback. Okay, so just for a moment, we remain silent, a short meditation.
Bring your full attention inward. And feel the collective power of the Cyber Sangha life. Amazing. You are sitting in your own private space and you are connected to more than 430 people around the world live and we are supporting each other. This is a collective power and when you are open, when you connect, you feel that connection. It's a different than when you're practicing alone. Breathe out all the stale breath. Don't hold the breath. Breathe out any discomfort this moment, either in your body, in the mind. Breathe it out. Each exhalation rest deeper into that stillness and silence and the spaciousness in that clear space. Continue. Gradually imagine all objects of ego, your ego, all objects of your conflict mind, all objects of your pain, fear out there. House, car, work. There's so much kind of heaviness, the sense of stuck. Imagine you are aware of them and they are the power of your awareness, they all are dissolving into the light. When they are there, when you are focusing on them, you feel pain. Now imagine they are there, but you are aware of them, you dissolve them into light. One after another one. Dissolve them all into the light. Breathe deep continuously. And particularly if there are maybe one or a few specific objects that has been bothering very strongly last few days. Dissolve those ones 
into light. Feel and trust that you have a strength, that you are supported by all the cyber sangha around the world, this moment, life. Feel that support. And everybody also, some sense of, send that blessing, support, light to each other. Now, gradually imagine all these light comes in your body, all the light from outside is coming in your body and dissolving all sickness, pain, blockages into the light. Feel all the solidity of your body dissolving into the light, your organs dissolving into the light, your cells in your body dissolving into the light, all the matters dissolving into the light because the nature of these matters are pure energy and light. We are discovering through this process. Imagine all this inner light, dissolution by your pain and your organs, they all gather together and become one single sphere of light in your forehead. And that moment, the sphere of light gradually dissipates and dissolves into this unbounded sacred space. The moment that happens, you are remain present in that unbounded sacred space. So that space is the clear, your awareness of that space is the light, that moment you have clear light, experiences of clear light, or similar, closer to experiences of clear light, and definitely much better than where you were before when you are stuck in that lack of space, and lack of awareness, please. You're no longer there for sure. You have shifted, uplifted, you have transcended, transcended. Just rest for a moment in that space. If, if it's the, during the daytime, this is where you, want, you will rest for another, whatever the amount of time you have. If this is a night, this is the where you will allow yourself to fall asleep in that experience. Okay. So uh, you can open your eye. This is amazing, right? We are in this cyber space, cyber sacred space, 
which has no limit how many, how many of us can be there, which is also completely okay when you come in and when you leave, doesn't interfere with anybody, which is also okay that you, anybody can make any comment or feedback uh, without interfering anybody. And all the time, some sense, we are connected with each other. It's amazing. The cyber space, the cyber sangha. So there's a whole. I think there's a new, very new ways, and uh, or maybe very ancient way of connecting with each other. And uh, uh, if it's a technology, we should make good use of it. If it's an inner awareness, we should definitely make a good use of it. But trying to transcend our limitations. This is what we are trying to do. So how was your practice here? Please uh, give me some feedback. Okay, so wonderful. Um, yeah, so we're going to finish for the day, and then uh, this next uh, coming uh, Thursday at 1 o'clock, right? So same time, so Thursday, same time, I'll be uh, guiding a meditation and also um, uh, answering some of the questions, and so some of the questions will, we will not be able to answer all of them, but some something that applies or something that is important, we'll try to answer to those questions. So thank you, sing the song, okay? <laughs> Bye.